In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up material displacements in Blender's Shader Editor. And I will also show you how to use the adaptive displacements if you'd like to use that as well. If you like using procedural materials in Blender, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material packs on my Gumroad store with the link in the description, and that's a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So the first thing that you need to do is go over here to the render properties, and you need to make sure that you're using the cycles rendering engine because the material displacements will not work in the EV rendering engine. Now if you want to use displacements in the EV rendering engine then you'll need to instead use the displacements modifier. And I'll be posting another video on how to use the displacement modifier so when that video is released I'll have the link in the description. But to use the material displacements make sure you're in cycles. The next important thing is to make sure your object is somewhat detailed because the displacements is going to use the geometry to actually pop out the mesh so your mesh needs to be pretty high detail because the more detail it is, the better the displacements will look. Or another way to give your object more detail is to go right over here to the modifier properties and you can click on add modifier and under generate you can add the subdivision surface modifier and this will subdivide the mesh and it'll give it even more geometry. And if you have an object like a cube and you give it the subdivision surface modifier and then turn up the subdivisions it will give it more geometry as you can see it has much more geometry but it is kind of making it a circular shape so if you want to fix that so that the cube stays in its original form you can change the Catmull Clark instead to simple. And now this object still has the subsurf, but it's going to keep its original shape. So I've now hopped over to the shading workspace and with the object selected, you can click on new to add new material or you can add a new material right over here on the material properties. And then there is one really important thing. If I minimize this tab, you need to open up the settings tab over here on the material properties. And on the settings tab, there is displacement settings here under surface. So right now, if the displacement is just set to bump only, it's not actually going to use the displacements. So you need to change this either to displacement only only or displacement and bump. So I usually use displacement and bump, but you can change this and see which one you like better. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is add some sort of texture into the displacement. So you could use texture maps. Maybe you've downloaded a material with different texture maps and there's a displacement map. You could totally use that, or you could also use a procedural texture. I'm gonna show you how to set up both of them. So first we're gonna set up a procedural texture. So in the shader editor here, I can press shift A. Let's go to the search. And I'm just gonna add like a noise texture. You can add whatever texture that you want. And then I'm also going to go into rendered mode by holding down the Z button and moving my mouse up into the rendered view because you won't actually be able to see the material displacements working if you're in solid view. So make sure you're in the rendered mode. All right. So now to use this noise texture in the displacement, we want to take the factor or you could also use the color. I'm going to use the factor and let's put that into the displacement. And now you can see it actually working, but there is a problem. It's kind of jutting off to the side and it looks really weird and distorted. And that is because this here is black and white data but then this here is displacement data so we need a node in here to convert this data into displacement data that the material can use so to do that you can press shift a and go to the search and you can search for the displacement node and you want to stick the displacement node before the displacement of the material output and I'm just going to drag it down here so now you can see the sphere is kind of like moved over and that's because to actually convert it to displacement data we want to put the factor into the height value value of the displacement. And now it is actually working properly, so the noise texture is displacing the object. Now to change the strength of the displacement, you can use the scale right here. So I could just turn the scale way down to maybe like a 0.1 if I want it to be less strong, or I could turn the scale up if I want it to be much stronger. And you can see if I add the same material to a cube, the cube isn't actually really being displaced and that's because it doesn't have very much geometry. So again, make sure you add the subdivision surface modifier or you could subdivide the mesh. So using the object context menu in edit mode, you could click on subdivide. And when I subdivide this, it's now going to have more and more geometry and so now that this cube is very subdivided now that it has lots of geometry you can see the displacement actually working so that is how you add a procedural texture into the displacements now i'm going to show you how to add an image texture so i'm just going to delete these materials and i'll press shift a and i'm going to add a plane and then again make sure that your object is very detailed so you can tab to go into edit mode and you can use the object context menu and subdivide this and you could subdivide this many times if you want to 
to be more detailed. Um, what you could also do is go here to the modifiers and you could add the subdivision surface to give it even more geometry. And then also remember it's very important to make sure you're in cycles render because the material displacements only work in cycles. So then again here in the shader editor I can click on new to add a new material. And then remember what's very important is that on each material that you want to use the displacements you need to open up the settings and down here on the surface you need to either use displacement only or displacement and bump. And then I'll make sure to go into the rendered mode in the 3D viewport here. And then what I'm going to do is drag in some textures. So I'm just going to drag in this color map here. This is Bricks05 from Ambient CG. Link will be in the description if you'd like to download this free brick texture. And I'll just put the color into the base color. And then of course I could add the roughness map and the normal map, but I'm now just going to add the displacement map. So from my file browser, I can just click and drag and I can drop the displacement texture into the material. Or you can also press Shift A and you can search for an image texture and then you can click on the open button to open up the texture. Now something that's really important with the displacement map is you need to make sure the color space is set to a non-color. And that is because the displacement texture isn't contributing to the base color and so we want the color space at non-color. Whereas any color maps we'd want to be set to sRGB. And then just like we did before with the noise texture, we can put the color into the displacement of the material output. Now you can see it's kind of stretching over to the side and it looks really weird. And that's because again, we need to convert the color data into displacement data. So I can press shift A, let's go to the search and I can search for the displacement node. And we want to put that in the wire before the displacement. And I can just drag it down. And then again, to convert the map into displacement data, we actually want the color to be going into the height value. And now you can see it is working properly, so it's actually displacing those bricks. And then it's way too strong right now, so I can just turn the scale maybe down to like a 0.1. That is looking a lot better. And you can see those bricks are all displaced. So now I'm going to show you how to use adaptive displacements if you'd like to do that. So I'm going to click right over here on the render properties. And right here on the feature set, you need to make sure you're using the experimental mode if you want to use the adaptive displacements. And then select your object, and you need to go right over here to to the modifier properties. And you need to click on add modifier and under generate, you need to add the subdivision surface modifier. And then just like I mentioned before, if you have an object like a cube and you don't want the subdivision surface modifier to change its shape, then on the subdivision surface, you can change the Catmull Clark instead to simple. And that way it'll add the subdivision surface, but it won't change the shape of the object. So then because we turned the feature set to experimental on the subdivision surface modifier, you'll see this adaptive subdivision. So you can check mark that to use the adaptive displacements. And what the adaptive displacements is going to do is it's just going to add more geometry where you're closer up. Now the dicing scale is going to control the detail of the adaptive subdivision. So if you want it very detailed, you could turn the dicing scale to like one, but make sure you don't turn it too low because if you turn it too low, there might be so much detail detail that Blender might crash. Or if you want it to be less detailed, then I could like turn the dicing scale to like 10, and now you can see it is less detailed. And to show you the adaptive displacements taking effect, I'm going to zoom way in to this brick here on the edge of the plane. And then if you select the plane, you can double tap the tab key, and that is going to reset the adaptive displacements. And so you can see now the displacements is very detailed because I zoomed into this area. And when you're rendering the scene, it's going to adapt and give you the most detail wherever the camera is closest. So now if I like move way over here to the other side of the plane, you can see there's not very much detail at all. So then again, to reset the adaptive displacements, you can double tap the tab key and that'll just go in and out of edit mode. And that's a great way to update the displacements. And now you can see it is much more detailed. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn how to use the displacement modifier, then you can check out my other tutorial when it is released with the link in the description. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.